from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster that wonders, uh, one, how does, how does that drink company that makes sparkling water get key lime and limoncello to taste slightly creamy? And the other question is, even though I enjoy it, is that a good idea? Um, even if it's possible. Well, you know what time it is? These are the questions you could ponder, but probably not at bedtime because you don't like it. Well, I do have sparkling water near my bed sometimes. Uh, the real sparkle are the stars in your eyes, but your eyes are closed. Uh, but I can still see them because I can feel them because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And uh, uh, th these are the sponsors. When your hand hits that coffee pot or fridge tomorrow, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. These are, this is how we're able to be here free for you twice a week. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is a part of the show where I ask you to sign up and support the show on Patreon, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. But I'm going to ask that you don't sign up for the bonus content, for the ad-free episodes, for the all-intro episodes, for the story-only episodes, for the all-night episodes. I'm going to ask to, you to sign up as a patron or come back as a patron only if you feel connected, only if the podcast makes you feel safe and cared for in the deep, dark night. You know, it's a rarity. I've been lucky enough to make this podcast since 2013 and to have it come out on a regular basis. I've never had to take any hiatuses. Uh, you know, take it, we take small breaks, uh, but uh, we've never had to put the show on hold before. I've been able to keep the podcast dependably coming out, consistently coming out since I started the show. And because I'm not able to do that alone at all. It's because of you and people like you who feel cared for, who feel so connected connected, they voluntarily pay for the podcast because they say, oh yeah, there is a cost to the show coming out consistently and dependably. So if you still feel cared for, if you feel connected to the show, if the podcast has made you feel safe in the deep dark night, the regular schedule, the rhythm of the podcast, the variety of the podcast, I'd ask that you consider returning as a patron or becoming a patron, particularly an annual patron. It's a great deal. You say, Save money. We save money on processing fees and really deepen your connection to the show if you're in a position to do so. Not if it's a financial stress, if you can, or you can put some other subscription on hold that you don't use. What other subscriptions make you feel this connected in the deep, dark night? Do you use them as much as sleep with me? So think about it and, and you say, oh, no, no. Yeah, I do feel cared for and I'm going to care back. Uh, sign up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Patron, P A T R O N. And when you sign up, message me right when you sign up through the Patreon. Uh, right after you sign up, send me a message and let me know how it feels. Do you, do you feel more cared for now that you're supporting the podcast? Do you feel more connected, a deeper connection to the show? Do you feel a part of when you sign up by taking that action? Let me know or not. Let me know. Uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Thanks so much. All right, everybody. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. You know, there's plenty of ways to support a healthy brain, learning a new language. I love doing that. I love my language app. Taking power naps. Oh boy, if I get a power nap in, it makes my day. But there's also BetterHelp Online Therapy. You know, for me, I have a lot of different stuff I do to support my health, uh, meditation, journaling, but talk therapy is the cornerstone with a licensed therapist. I do that every single week. Therapy improves my relationship with myself, with my thoughts, with my feelings, and with other people in my life. Uh, and I always recommend it. And I love recommending BetterHelp in my personal life uh, to people because BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat therapy sessions so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist right away in under 48 hours. And our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash sleep with me. That's betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash sleep with me. Thanks, everybody.
All right, everybody, it is time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast. And each year, it's where I pop my peas, if you please. I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. That is how we are able to be here for free. No cost to you uh, is the listeners who support the sponsors. And I'm looking for listeners who supported the sponsors recently. So if you supported a sponsor, here, here's what, sign up for a free trial, check them out. If you checked out our sponsors, uh, let me know about it, and I'll say thank you. Sleep with me podcast I slash sponsors share about it on social media but if you support a sponsor please let them know about it tag them on social media give them a call and let me know about it sleep with me podcast.com slash sponsors because i want the show to be free for everybody for paying for it to be optional so thanks to everyone uh who's out there supporting uh supporting the show and supporting the sponsors the second part of the sleepy supporter zone is you getting the support you need right now if you're in need of extra help right now there's links to resources you could connect with right now in the show notes use those resources it's about being a member of our communities uh being a part of positive change not just saying black lives matter not just saying stop aapi hate not just saying support ukraine but taking action and learning more there's links to resources where you could do that in the show notes it's also about being a part of the podcast community the sleep podcast community my friend over at sleep whispers has a new show called calm history you know if you want to relax with curious moments from history check out calm history each episode is narrated in a calm voice to help you relax or fall asleep you'll travel back in time to the global history of rubber joan of arc henry ford the titanic marco polo Jackie Robinson, and so much more. Just search your podcast player for Calm History or use the link in our show notes to silkpodcasts.com. That's Calm History. Check it out. Oh, Mishra Bart, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, runner, runner. Mr. Bard, uh, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission to be a part of positive change. And what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, uh, whether that's uh, thoughts on your mind, uh, things you're thinking about. So thoughts, you know, things you know, things, things you're from the past, the present, the future, just stuff in your mind, on your mind. Now, a lot of my thoughts, now that I'm thinking about it, they're, they're attached to imaginary future, so it's not even the future, actually. Uh, thoughts, feeling, feel, anything you're feeling physically that's coming up or emotionally that you're experiencing. It could be other things like changes in routine. It could be someone, it, you, you're tra- traveling. It could be a guest. Uh, you could be anticipating something, going through something. Whatever it is, it could, you know, it could be a ton of different stuff, but whatever it is, we're here, I'm here, we're all here together in the deep, dark night. That's one reminder, is whatever you're going through, there's a lot of other people out there tossing, turning, mind racing, you know, physical sensations, uh, feelings, thoughts, uh, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. So while we might not know exactly what you're going through, you're not alone. Like we, we're, we're feeling it too. So we can relate. Uh, 
So what was my, whatever, uh, whatever scheme, like I'm here to take your mind off of that and keep you company so that you could fall asleep. To make the deep, dark night less lonely is really what my job is. And the way I do that is I have a safe place set aside here that I can smooth, that I can pat, that I can rub down, then I can send it across the deep, dark night to you. It can use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents, which means my voice is not traditionally soothing. It's a bit different. I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to get mixed up. I'm going to forget what I was talking about. Then I'll repeat myself. I may pause. And then I may forget. Then I say, wait a second. And then, I'll, then I may change the subject, forget to go back to what I was talking about that didn't make any sense anyway. Here's a, here's a something I don't know if I've ever described the pod. This podcast is completely full of incomplete thoughts. Uh, in, in, incomplete thoughts, when they get to this podcast, they say in a non-ironic way, you complete me. But I mean, but it has some irony to it, but it's not like a, it's unironic. Is that possible? Someone just said, some part of my brain just said another word that ends in ironic uh, to describe me. Like if you combine Ronick with Mo, and they said that statement is also, they would combine those two together, those sounds. But I'd say, well, are you sure about that? Because when an incomplete thought gets here, it says, I feel completed. Uh, I feel like my journey's complete. Okay, technically you got me. I was paraphrasing. It was like incomplete. In, I was incompletely communicating an incomplete thoughts, thoughts. There could be yet another, but I think we have part of a book there. Completing, incomplete, th completing, like, it, you, that's ironic. That's not, I don't know, what's the word that's not ironic? It's like I'm completing incomplete thoughts. Incomplete thoughts, completed. Completely completing incomplete thoughts. Uh, completely. Uh, you Incomplete thoughts, you, <laughs> there's another, it's a two-way street, too. I see you complete me, too. I see you. I see you, dear one. Just like I say every morning, I write that out. I see you, dear one. Do not be, I got that from Ruth, Dr. Ruth King. I see you, dear one. Do not be afraid. I'm here to help. Uh, I say that to my incomplete thoughts, uh, and they say it to me, it seems, it seems like it. So I'm completely off topic here, because, but, but right on topic. So I'm going to try to create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. Uh, and I'm going to send my voice. Oh, no, I went through that part already. See, I told you that was kind of a pointless meander. I went back, right back to where I already was. Uh, so, well, whatever it is that's keeping you awake, uh, yeah, I'm here to take your mind off of that uh, with these different techniques I use. So polished are these techniques. You may say they're, you say they're over polished because you, the, you got to the shaggy core or the rough, you say, and I say, yeah, that's my job. I'm still, still trying to think of any more analogies that I can make out of incomplete thoughts that are completed, that feel completed. Okay, you got me, brain. You see, you're not completing incomplete thoughts. Uh, and I say, no, I'm giving them a sense of completion and validation that they've reached the end of their journey. And they can go, you know, I mean, how about, how about that? I mean, now while, you're, uh, while, while we're having a, like a lighthearted debate internally here, which big farm would you want to go to? The farm for completed thoughts or ink? Because it sounds like that'd be a pretty like a wide open space. Uh, you know, the next level of existence for incomplete thoughts. It might, you know, you say like it could be, it probably is pretty surrealistic. Or maybe that's where, inc maybe that's where they, you know, oh, oh, wait a second. I even think about this. You say opposites attract. Uh, are there any thought completists out there that are listening that are like on the edge of their seat? They're like, oh boy, I can't wait to, I don't know why, but I can't wait to see what he says next. Uh, and that, you know, because uh, I could complete it. I mean, it is the ta sleep with me take home game for listeners. It's completing my incomplete thoughts. Uh, so there you go. There's another way we're all working together here. You know, if you're new, you're probably already confused. You may be taken aback in a small way because this podcast is very different. It's not what most people expect out of a sleep podcast, even though we were kind of the first sleep podcast on the block. It still doesn't, or, or the, the show still doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so I'm going to try to explain it to you. But if you're here 
and you are confused or taken aback, that's totally normal or skeptical or doubtful or irrit irritated. Those are very normal ways to get to the podcast because you probably tried a lot of stuff to fall asleep. You probably had some reasonable expectations when you got here. And you probably tried a lot of different stuff to help you get to sleep like we all have. And then none of it's worked. So that's why you're here. So let me just give you some tra information to meet your skepticism uh, on an equal plane. In the pl maybe on the same plane where complete thoughts and incomplete thoughts are... Uh, connecting deeply i didn't even think about that but oh boy are they but uh so what was my point um oh so if you're new a couple of things to know one this podcast most people don't like it at the first time and it doesn't work for them like millions of regular listeners have said took two or three tries for me to get used to the show sometimes more sometimes years uh because the podcast is so different it takes a while to realize you only barely kind of listen to the show. It's almost a, somewhat of passive listening. You kind of listen when you feel like it, but you don't listen or pay attention the whole time. So uh, if you're just skeptical or doubtful, just give it a few tries and see how it goes. Um, because this is a podcast you don't really listen to. It's also a podcast that doesn't put you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company while you fall asleep. I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bestie, your boar burr, your neighbor, your boar bud, your boar burra, if you're in the San Diego area. Whatever it is, uh, like uh, whichever role I can fill, um, I'm here to keep you company while you drift off to take your mind off of stuff for you to just barely listen to me. I'm here to talk. You don't need to listen. You don't, you know, you don't have to do anything except uh, barely go along for the ride. So those are two things to know. Um, oh, the reason I make the show. I kind of talked about it earlier. But one, I've been there tossing, to, you know, I've been all, all that stuff. So I know how it feels. But more importantly, the fact is, is that you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a place you can rest. You deserve a bedtime you don't dread, that you feel good about. And if I could be a part of prov providing that for you, so that your life is more manageable, that your life's a little bit easier, that you could flourish. That's my dream come true, really. So that's why I make the show, and it's a pleasure and a dream to be able to do it on a regular basis and put all this work in it is because uh, if it can help, I know how it feels, and I know it's important. And that if your life's better, the world we live in will be a better place to be in. Uh, other things that throw new people off is the structure of the show. Oh boy, does it get a strong response. Uh, and the structure of the show is kind of like you're, you can adjust how you listen to the podcast. But let me just explain to you because it does have a very deliberate structure. Show starts off with a greeting. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So you feel seen and welcome. Then I usually say something silly uh that in goofy so you say okay the show's welcoming but it's a little bit funny or almost fu not quite funny but you know almost he almost got there incompletely funny there's there's one so that could be an unauthorized bag incompletely funny uh like uh the jokes that's a statement describing the jokes on sleep with me i guess yeah it could be in pamphlet it could fit on an index card i guess so, oh, so the show starts off like that. Then there's support. Support so the podcast can come out twice a week for free, wherever you want to listen to it. Then there's support for listeners who are having a tough time. Then there's supports for the community, support for the communities around the show and ways you could take action or learn more. Uh, then there's the intro. The intro goes from whatever, I don't know, six or eight minutes into the show till 20, 25, 20, 18, 13, 12, 11 minutes into the show, depending on how long it is. And the intro sometimes gets lumped in with the support, but it's actually a show within a show that eases you into bedtime. It serves a purpose. It's different every time so that your brain can adjust, so you have something to look forward to, talking to your boyfriend. Who knew he would talk so long about incomplete, completing in, incomplete thoughts and try to, you know, put it, you know, put a little bow on it where it says, you complete me. Uh, what if I got, what if, like, uh, what if I got, I wonder if anybody's left an incomplete thought on my door. I have on my doorstep before, but uh, with a bow, please complete me. 
that would be that would be a futile effort. If you do, don't do that, don't deliver an incomplete thought at my doorstep with a note, please complete me. Unless you mean it in that other word, like non-ironic, but whatever it is, sense. Uh, it's like beyond my, and unless you mean it in a way beyond my understanding, because me completing thoughts, uh, that's a tall, a tall task, a lifetime journey. So I'd say, I guess you say one day, many, many, that's what I'd say to the, the incomplete thought in the basket. One day, after many, many attempts to complete you and uh, arranging you in ways that may be unpleasant at the time, if everything goes well, You'll go on your own journey to, to completion, uh, and you'll look back and you'll say, your ability to decomplete me allowed me to complete me. So I'm glad, partial, I'm partially glad I was left on your doorstep as a complete thought, incomplete thought. And then maybe the thought, or the, and then if it was a twin, I would say, didn't you realize the other one was a complete thought? You decompleted it, and it was never completed. Uh, and I'd say, oh boy, it sounds like I've it sounds like I've drifted into over the brain bar- some sort of brain barrier of total incomplete. I've reached total incompletion. Okay, so the intro goes on and on and on, so you get stuff like that every time. But it also is part of people's wind down routine. There are two percent of listeners that skip the intro, but for most listeners, uh, some are falling asleep. That's great for them. Oh boy, are we happy for you? Looking good. But for most listeners, it, it takes us some time to wind down. So the intro is part of their bedtime routine, whether they're getting ready for bed, they're in the room doing something calm, or they're in bed getting comfortable, or they're somewhere else looking at the stars or whatever it is. Uh, paint, maybe you're painting your toenails. How about that? Looking good. Holy mow. I love that color. Um... I like how you, like, I like those foam things between your toes, too. Uh, I was going to make a joke about it, but I was, uh, leave it, let's leave that as an incomplete joke. Uh, uh, but Because um, I was just going to make something smarmy. Like, oh, those aren't foam triangles. I said, okay. Oh, no, they're cubes. Okay, thank you. Thanks for making a joke, a positive joke out of a negative one. Yeah, okay, so... Oh, that's the intro. Then there's support for sponsors uh, between the intro and the show. Again, so the podcast can come out twice a week for free, over 500 episodes or around 500 episodes, in the, like wherever you want to listen to them. Then there's our story. Tonight, it'll be a recap of se- season one, episode one, the pilot of Ted Lasso. Talk about, ba- we're, we're calling it, I don't know, lulling and learning from Lasso or something. I don't know what I'm calling it. That's what I'm calling it right now. And who you can't keep, keep a, ga- you know, just like you can't keep a gaffer from his pitch, you can't keep a, a gabber from his itch uh, to take your mind off of stuff and not get to the point. So I'm so happy to be covering that. Such a brilliant show. Then there'll be some thank yous at the end. So it's the structure of the show. That's how the show works. It is very different. Give it a few tries. See how it goes. Again, you could always adjust uh, and start the show at 20 minutes. uh, But most listeners find uh, their own way after listening for a while. What works best for them. But I'm glad you're here. I work really hard. I earn a nice drive. And I really hope I can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to do it for you for free twice a week. All right, everybody, Scoot's here. We're doing a little, uh, or what we're doing, this is a, it totally, it was like, uh, I'm not in the mood, uh, like, I'm, I'm, I'm in the mood to record the show, but I'm so, some of my behaviors are so learned after doing a, or practiced, uh, that I, I should have paused before I hit record, but I hit record, I started recording or speaking, but this is great news. This is something new. Uh, we haven't done, and I'm not even sure how it's going to go because I, I had an idea. So we're, this is a TV recap, uh, of a show and it fits in the kind of slot and style of the show we did with the good place. And I said, this is going to be lulling and learning from Lasso. So we're going to be talking about Ted Lasso season one over the next, uh, you know, however many episodes. And my ideal thing could be because, uh, and this has been something I've been thinking about for a while, 
And I do like the shows kind of build up a little bit of a few seasons just uh, so I have some lead time. And I, I don't know. That's just uh, so, so it's like, uh, you know, I've jumped on some shows when they started in the past. But it's nice because I was able to watch season one, then watch kind of season one again with other people. And, uh, you know, watch as the shows progressed. But, but uh, then going back now and watching season one for the podcast. But, you know, it's one of the things I was struck by when I've been watching it for pleasure is uh, learning from Lasso, like I said, but also learning from everybody on the show, Rebecca, the beard, and, and, and down the line. Uh, and, you know, somebody might get some Nate eye rolls, but no, let's see what we can learn from Nate too. Uh, but more by example, not something, I don't know if this is the correct word of didactic, uh, but it is like something through example, but maybe in a more, I don't know, maybe this will be more of a, like a, a conceit of this, uh, how it'll go, the meanders and stuff, or maybe it won't, we'll, we'll find out because we're new, this we're back, I mean, it's our first time doing it. But I do think about that with The Good Place. I mean, we did in, in TNG how uh, those examples were set for, for uh, I mean, other shows too have good examples, but I think, uh, you know, I mean, there's like the humanist background to, to Star Trek and then uh, um, this more moral kind of compass uh, part of uh, The Good Place. I haven't got a chance to, to read the book yet. So, I don't know. I mean, I think, uh, and, and I do think there is this uh, cont- like countercultural type thing. And another thing, I guess, so this will be a tangent before we get to episode one. Maybe we won't even do episode one right now. I think we will. But is that, uh, like, I think it's also, I'm trying to think how to put this, because I do, like this, uh, this idea of writing Ted Lasso off or the show off uh, as a, a, a piece of aw shucks optimism is something I, I've, like, had put, put on me too before. And sometimes I push back on that a little bit too hard and I say, no, 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 like, uh, um, you know, the, the, but, but you, you know, we like the podcast springs out of the deep, dark night. And I think that's pretty clear in Ted Lasso too, that it's something that there's like, uh, th- that there's a depth beyond the surface and, uh, th- that it's not like, is that vacuous, uh, or, or whatever. So I don't know, I guess that's the end of my tangent ended. So I don't know, let's run through my notes and then visually watch the episode because uh, I'm I'm just feeling like for this first episode and then we'll see, we'll check our time because of these episodes length, uh, maybe it'll give us some time to do some facts. And then I'm also like, how many facts do you need to be, I mean, Ted Lasso is learning uh, through season one, two. But yeah, so season one, episode one, pilot, music question mark, uh, training, goal moves, what, what, something, muse, bad, window, music, uh, uh, thinking face. It doesn't say bad thinking face. What does that say? Window. I think that, like, if I spelled window, uh, I W N T E T. But one of the T's are uh, slanting towards one another. Music, uh, something, thinking face, uh, panting, fifth anniversary. This is, uh, oh, painting, fifth anniversary, Hockney, tabloids, George, we, assertive, George, we, George is here maybe? Maybe that's that coach, uh, short shorts, buyout contract. I heard assertive because I think uh, that's interesting. The first example is set by Rebecca that we can learn from in that uh, Rebecca's assertiveness uh, is something I could learn from. And I don't know. I think uh, she's very assertive here. And I mean, it's me. I mean, like... Uh, well, I, I guess you, I, I'm trying to think of like, I, I hope you've seen season one of Lasso when you're watching this. Uh, 
but I guess I'm trying to respect uh, some of the journeys of this season are so good. Football, is that what that says? F-U-T-O-O-B-A-L-L, average. Liam and Noel, not an oasis. Uh, Keep you off, uh, no raisins in my salad. And then it, it took me, like, I realized that that was a joke uh, or a callback to Liam and Noel, not a wa- Oasis, uh, I think, like raisins. Uh, like, it, if you watch the episode, you'll see, uh, like, it took me, this was on my second podcast watch. I said, oh, Rebecca's referring to something else. Uh, does that say SVP? AFC? Richmond, Lasso, Sweet Ted. Oh no, SVP. Yes, yeah, Scotty Van Pelt. Uh, so, so they set up a uh, Scott Van Pelt. Who kind of does an in, our first introduction to Ted uh, from AFC Richmond and Ted's. So they do a lot of. Um, it's the pilot, right? So they have to do a lot of explaining, and they do it well. Uh, they really do it efficiently, in, in my opinion. And uh, so this is the one where. So we meet Rebecca, and um, we meet Higgins uh, br- briefly. I think it's Higgins in this, yeah. And we see that Higgins, and again, well done, well written shows. Uh, do not, you know, again, don't get distracted by the surface because maybe you're seeing your reflection or you're seeing the sky and you're not looking in. So, okay, so Scotty Van Pelt sets up who Ted Lasso, the joyous Ted Lasso, moment of joy, beautiful game, lavatory. Oh, yeah, so then, oh, man, I just can't believe all these choices. Uh, I really just kept liking them. So we then with our first contact with Ted, the real Ted Lasso, is he's coming out of a bathroom. We see he's reading Dharma Bums by Jack Kerouac. Well, we don't see that, but... Uh, if you take, you, you took some investigation, we see he's also, he's in flying in first class, which makes sense. Uh, we see he has a friend, uh, coach beard. Um, he's reading, he has a copy of soccer for dummies and inverting the pyramid. Then we see, then we get again through the eyes of the odd, like, uh, Ted's audience, uh, this kid, oi mate, uh, uh, can we take an ussy wicked then we uh then beard bestows on us our first kind of setup but also information into touch means out of bounds i put a note to try to read beard's hand at some point which i i think maybe there may be these references to kansas city barbecue spots but i'm not sure uh, and then Ted Lasso, man, shout out to Su- On Summer's Horseback, uh, episode of Sleep With Me in the 500s, I think, but we did really re- re- re-release it not that long ago. If you're enjoying riding a horse, you're doing it wrong. First class, uh, oh boy, this is going to be tough. C. Escalante in out drums, uh, not from each other. That's Ice Plan. 10.08 p.m., family pick, uh, open song in sequence. Uh, oh, no, he says, so this is a cute moment. You, again, you get, a, you, you, like, through just through the dialogue and the, and the, and the performing, um, we see the depth of their friendship or their companionship, uh, or like professional companionship. I don't know. They're friends, uh, but they're also coworkers. If we see each other in our dreams, uh, let's pretend not to know each other. And then I think there's a, I think Ice Plan is, uh, now I can't remember, Inception. That's just my spelling of Inception. Because they said, oh, it's that uh, reference to Inception. Because if you really watch the show, there's, I don't know if there is an end to the rap pop culture in jokes within jokes within jokes. Uh, they're, like, I, I can't find the bottom of them in a good way. Okay, then after the opening sequence, we're at the airport. There's some good dialogue about uh, sleep. Uh, eat my Coke. That, my name's Ted. Eat my Coke. I don't know what that is. Oh, no, yeah, he ate Beard's cookie, uh, and he said, let's not talk about that. Then another learning from Lasso. He introduces himself 
in a very smooth way. This is, again, this is something we could practice uh, maybe on our Discord. I don't know if anybody wants to do learning from Lasso. It would have to be more community than me leading it. Uh, but I guess this is one thing we could do every day is say, my name's Ted, what's yours? I mean, don't say Ted unless your name's Ted. He's Ollie. And they say, can we take your bags? They say, we packed them, we'll carry them. Pit stop, uh, their pit stop is at the Tower Bridge, not the London Bridge. We get a joke about that. Not in Kansas anymore. They're from Wichita State. Uh, so I thought that was a nice little double, you know, it's like, oh, it's from, I don't know. And it, and Ted says something like, uh, never said that when I wasn't in Kansas. I don't, I don't know. Then they're driving to the, um, I don't know what they call it, the pitch of football. I don't know what they call it, the stadium. And Ted says, uh, how'd they come up with soccer? Uh, no hands. Uh, Beard's explaining it. Then they pause in the stadium. They have a view of the pitch. Uh, she look, uh, she loaf. Uh, I don't know. There's a long look. Again, well, we'll talk about the next thing we'll learn from Lasso and the Beard and Rebecca, actually. Ted touches the grass, uh, long look, view of the pitch, uh, she look, at I mean, that's what it looks like it says, uh, stop, get off, who are you? And then he says, I'm Coach Lasso. Oh, okay, take all the grass you want. What's your name? There's a long pause. Uh, uh, then they don't have any Nathans here. And then Ted says, I love this kid. Nate runs Reba from Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca says, Mrs. Welton's my father, Mrs. Welton's my father, call me Rebecca. So more good, I, uh, um, dialogue cause they talk about, well, take Higgins, take beard to get the IDs and everything. And Ted says something about, uh, he needs a humidifier, something else and the Wi-Fi password. No Ted for Ted. I don't know what that says. How do you take your tea? I always thought tea was hot brown water. You'll get used to it, uh, or get used to it, because Ted says it does. That's what it is. Uh, and then there's a great joke. Oh, so how about a tour? Oh, I'd like to see Abbey, Abbey Road. Uh, um, what does this say? Holy cow. Something his trip. Uh, condo, con, long. Modest, uh, his trip. Oh, okay. Ted really cares. Uh, how are you holding up? What does that say? Abbey Road. But she says it's around here. I mean, man, man, sometimes it's just the way it is. Uh, I know some people don't like this, but it's just like my, like, uh, even when I'm slowed down, my handwriting more reflects my. I know, it's just like, a, whatever, how you holding up? And then she surprises him with the press conference, uh, locker room silence. Well, there's goats on the uniform, I think. I wondered about that. Fizzy water, green and red mics. Uh, Ted's pretty honest. Two halves, win or lose. He makes a few mistakes. Uh, we see we start to get the pub crew cutaways. Like a little bit like a modern Waldorf and Stadler. I didn't even think about that till just now, but it's really like a proxy, you know. Uh, and it offers me even more comedy. Winks to beard, into touch, so we could get the pay off of that. Uh, and then again, another learning from Lasso. True, co actually complimenting yourself. So I put down three things. Uh, introduce yourself, uh, one. So these are the three lessons we could learn from Lasso this episode. Introduce yourself, compliment for real, because it does cause Trent Krim some pause, uh, but, it, you know, Trent still follows up. And then three, pause. Uh, these are powerful lessons. You know, we, we, could take the, we could take them from Lasso. We don't even need them to learn them from Lasso. Uh, or project. You say, Scooch, you're projecting on Lasso. I say, okay, if I'm projecting something useful, then... Uh, for once, uh, okay, sequence of questions and mistakes, uh, spits water, um, he has a ringing noise, uh, I've been there, all sense of manners, salty, oh, Rebecca says, where's your sense of manners, uh, salty, Bannock, uh, Brunick, have you all, 
are here you here you all are and uh, Rebecca says, well, let me remind you, this team's been in profound mediocrity. And then they kind of are aghast at her again, her just being assertive uh, with the truth. And she says, uh, am I wrong? Am I wrong? Uh, Rebecca. Oh, yeah. So learning from Rebecca, assert and repeat if you need to. And pause. Uh, and then she says, Ted, I'm sorry, uh, proving them wrong. No bubble water. A gaffer from his pitch. Uh, then Higgins is excited about his choice. He says, I like this lasso guy. And uh, the premise of the season one is uh, revealed right then. Rebecca reveals the season. And you say, okay, this is again, a, um, again, chal challenging as a um, creative constraint to take this type of conceit. Uh, and I don't know if in some sense explored in a new way. It's like, uh, people always say reinvent. I say, well, they're exploring it. Uh, and it is like a creative constraint. That's a true challenge. Cause you're saying, uh, how am I going to take this constraint and, and use it as a misdirect, but still make it a fulfilling storyline. And I've talked about this in interviews before when I've talked about Ted Lasso before I was doing a podcast, uh, about it. It's just like, uh, or in personal conversations, it's like the 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 line they were they they've been able to go on. I don't think it's really it, it's unimaginably a, a, like a, a amount of uh, I think collaboration and effort to be able to go on that line successfully, where it hasn't become apparent, where it has depth uh, and surface, and you're aware of both of those things. Uh, um, where it isn't just a parody or the surface, you know, I don't know if you know, like, yeah, I'm here to put you to sleep though. Uh, then they talk about GIF versus GIF, uh, as Rebecca talks about the premise. Uh, thank you, Higgins. Gaffer and his pitch training makes perfect. Uh, and again, then we get some exposition delivered in a wonderful way, uh, through, uh, Nate the Great, uh, kind of just saying, well, there's Roy Kent, uh, they talk about sports drinks. I think uh, Beard says Casey signs original or something. Nate's impress or Nate's sports drink impresses the beard. Uh, Jamie Tart. Uh, he's like a kitty cat uh, spooked by a cucumber or something. Great uh, at feathers. Uh, uh, Sam. Uh, Sam Obasanya. Uh, from Nigeria, wake, wakes, oh no, Wales, uh, somebody else from Wales, I don't know who that is, uh, but we meet, uh, the three main, uh, players on the team that, that, uh, that are going to be, you know, they're introducing characters, uh, oh, there's like, uh, four, how many countries are in this country? Four. Oh, it's a bit like America. So we're getting punchline within punchlines. Uh, we go into the locker room. There's kind of like a reprise of the theme. Axe body spray is Lynx body spray. Uh, favorite cats, uh, Lynx. Uh, favorite of the great cats. I don't know what he says. Uh, Roy, stare down. See the players' numbers. Disrespected Nate. All that jazz joke. Knock, knock. We meet Keely. She's on a CG belt buckle. Jamie has an icon hat on, office rearrange, uh, sing, fly, song, sim simplify. Oh, so then there's there, like there's a sequence where they're decorating the office. Uh, doctor inspection word triangle. I don't think that's what that says, but they put up all these inspirational, decorating, inspirational, sports inspirations. Uh, it kind of, again, thematically shows where they want to go, the Beard and uh, um, Ted and their influences. Beard, uh, he does an alternating snap, like light snaps in Ted's ear. Ted dozed off. Ted does not react. Uh, oh, so then Roy comes in and Roy's disrespectful. But again, Ted pauses when agitated. <laughs> can't, I mean, I don't even know if he gets it. He must get agitated. 
but he's great. He says, wait till we win him over then. Uh, so again, I think again, like this ability, and we, you know, this is just an idealized version, but, uh, the ideal of, uh, uh, and I guess maybe Ted just shows that he can't just do this all the time, but, uh, to be able to, to have, to be so grounded in who you are or where you're trying to go or a sense of I'm okay, that he says, yeah, just wait till we win this guy over. Like Ted does have this, he doesn't have optimism. I don't think he has hope. Uh, and there's a big difference. I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but, uh. I think, it, in my opinion, it just this is just my opinion, and just my opinion right now, which is so it's just coming out. But it's like, uh, so maybe I'm projecting on optimism or redefining optimism. But uh, kind of my thought about optimism versus hope in this situation, as I'm using them to describe Ted Lasso, so would be that Ted is not optimistic in the sense that my defining optimism right now is like everything's going to work out no matter what. Uh, and it's going to be great, A OK. -okay. Where hope is, okay, well, I'm going to do my best and things are going to turn out how they're going to turn out. And I'm going to be, it's going to be OK. Uh, and I don't have to worry, but I still be, but it's OK for me to be worried. Like it's like a sw going with the f stream. Uh, where maybe optimism is like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to launch into the jet stream. I don't know. Uh, he borrows some tape, uh, puts up, which Beard has handy, but puts up the believe sign. He do, I liked when he jumped down after putting the sign up, he combs his hair. Uh, he covers up Keely, Jamie's number nine. Keely comes, she helps him pow off, uh, old school beatbox. Uh, so they do a pow, a high, old school high five. Ted does a beatbox. She says, uh, bros mo motive uh oh bismarck key but he she, she says i never know how to react to when a grown man beatbox is in front of me which is funny that's happened once keely gives him what i would say is was that a royal bow or a ballet bow or a stage bow uh nate's carlo there's lots of uh, comedy in this with uh in the background higgins and rebecca beard is fun nice man uh, so Higgins is saying, I'm troubled because Ted is such a nice man. Primitive, invisible, steaming wheel. Oh, I don't know what the next thing is, but they're in Nate's car. Ted makes, he's so joyous. Check out this invisible, or enthusiastic. Uh, so you got to watch this sequence. The invisible steering wheel, beard in the back with a suitcase. Uh, I accept, uh... Oh, yeah, so she says, I'm going to give you a promotion, Higgins, uh, to deal with it. Uh, but then again, again, Rebecca, I guess, asserts ba true boundaries. Uh, she tells him the truth and puts it in perspective. She goes, uh, what about your past behavior, uh, Higgins? Uh, so don't start uh, acting like you have this compass. Uh, Higgins doesn't feel good. Beard, a coach. Uh, Beard as coach, double question mark, hands him. Uh, then we see a welcome lasso basket, which we'll talk about more when we do the visual run through. Piano music, uh, finger time check. Uh, oh, yeah, Ted tries to figure out what time it is back home. He puts on his PJs. He calls the family. His shirt, I think it says George Arthur's something shack or slack. Uh, He's got a humidifier on the table, at least one. They're saying, uh, you know, a family need for space. I love you. And then Ted says, no, that's okay. You don't have, like, uh, like we don't know the conversation. Uh, uh, he goes on bed. He lays down in his bed on his back. He turns the lights out. And he says, shoot, I can't sleep, uh, which is relatable to all of us. And then we, they play out the credits with some Bismarck key. Okay, so that's our first run through, everybody. Everybody scoots here, and uh, we're just uh, going to do another non note run through of uh, Ted Lasso. Uh, just downloading it, season one pilot. And I guess this is the middle of the episode, so I'll announce it somewhere else. We'll do 
There's so many good things to look up. Maybe we'll just do a couple fact episodes uh, to fill out this season. I don't know. I don't know if we'll do those in between or what, because uh, I don't want to miss uh, all the great extras. Uh, so we got our thing. I got to turn on, hopefully, closed captioning. Okay, so we're watching here. They're playing soccer. Music's playing. Goal. Jamie, I think that's Jamie Tart. Uh, got a rainbow. I think that's called when you rainbow it over somebody's head. What do you call it when you uh, kick it through their legs? That's called a pot. No, I don't know what's called. It has a thing. Then we have Rebecca's face. Uh, we realize she's staring at the painting, not out the window. Her office is being cleared out. She takes a deep breath, uh, points at the painting. Higgins, uh, Higgins, uh, you know, what happens to point out, oh, boy, that's worth a million pounds. Uh, well, you should have taken it then, Higgins, come on. And he winces. Uh, and we see the uh, Rebecca Welton. Come on, Higgins. Uh, and then this is when, the, um, what's his name comes in. Some nice paintings in the office. There's some flowers. Um, I'm assuming the new paintings. Oh, there's a butterfly uh, thing. Uh, I'm assuming some of the paintings, show, the newer paintings, because they kind of thematically, I don't know. We'll see, I guess, later in the season if those are Rebecca's or uh, not. We see the short shorts on George. And uh, tea on Rebecca's desk. Uh, she's in a clear teacup so we can see that it's tea. Also, you know, the amber color tea is always nice to look at. Uh, and she kind of puts uh, this guy in his place uh, and says, uh, you know, you've really been a remarkably average. And you wear short shorts uh, and you're rude. Uh, casual misogyny. Liam and Noel, not an oasis. Uh, so, uh, by the way, you, uh, head out uh, on the road, bro. And, you know, keep take your raisins with you. And he is, you know, not a nice guy. And so, again, she has to assert herself and say, uh, uh, by the way, we, we've uh, let you go. Good day. And then Higgins says, what do you want me to do about a new manager? Uh, should I prepare a list of candidates? And Rebecca, in a slow Zoom, says, uh, no, not necessary. That's when we go to SVP, Scotty Van Pelt, uh, his sports center, AFC Richmond, Theodore, Ted Lasso. And Ted's eyebrows are very up, Joker-esque, actually, in his sports center photo with his Wichita sweater on. The Shockers, uh, they won this, uh, division two football, uh, championship in, uh, his first season, but it was Ted's dancing, uh, that, you know, gave us pure, you know, pure, pure joy, no adulteration. Oh, we see the beard, beards in the background dancing too. He's got a yellow hat on. First time I noticed that, uh, and good luck with the most beautiful game. And then we go to the lavatory. Ted comes out of the airplane lavatory, grabs his Kerouac, sits down. He's on chapter 14, just in case you're wondering. And then this kid uh, is like, uh, let's take an Ussy. They take a picture wide. He goes, oh, selfie. But he goes, it's not myself, it's us. And it? Ussy, I like that. Wicked kid snaps. Uh, you coaching football, I can't believe it. He says, it's not a good idea, though. And Ted says, I've heard that. He, turn, I don't know. He said, heard that tune before, but I'm still dancing. Plus, this kid's in first class. Uh, uh, then he, uh, Beard's sitting behind him. They're not sitting together. He goes, tell me about, you know, into touch. That's when they do that. Uh, okay. Oh, he says, you're going to have to give me five bucks if I use it in a sentence later. They do some sort of pinky shake, uh, or not pinky shake, two thing shake. Uh, take, get some sleep, Ted. And Ted says, this is a good idea what we're doing. And he goes, it's wild. It's a challenge. Yeah. 
And Ted says, you know, we got to be uncomfortable, which is another lesson from Lasso that I didn't write down. If it's uncomfortable, that means you're doing it right. Uh, I mean, if it's outside your comfort zone. Then they talk about the dreams. You got it, stranger. And Beard puts on a sleep mask, but Ted looks at his phone. Not a good idea, Ted. That's blue light. Uh, we hear some snoring and uh, theme music plays. We also see the stadium is changing colors. Uh, so it is like, uh, and you see names of the characters and stuff, but you see that uh, the stadium's being reborn as it becomes Ted Lasso from blue to red. And uh, we see wide shots and we airport, don't know which airport it is. Uh, and Ted didn't sleep on the plane. He was thinking about not sleeping. Then I was thinking about not, not sleeping. And uh, that's never a good thing, you know. And then he said, I ate some cookies, uh, including yours. Uh, not, we're not going to talk about it. It's not a, there's our ride. My name's Ted, Ollie. I think it is Casey Signs original as the beards had. Uh, Ted's, try, Ted's hair is about a whack. Uh, they both have backpacks on, different style backpacks. Uh, and Ted has a sweater and an Oxford shirt on. Beard has a polo and a sweatshirt. I think like kind of like a sports type material sweatshirt though, not cotton. Smart move. Uh, and then we go to the AFC Richmond Stadium. It's a overcast today. They do have they have a ride to the stadium. They just don't have a ride home. And they're walking through. Ted goes out to look at the uh, pitch. Got to zoom up behind him with the beard. And perfect day to look at the pitch. It's misty out there. Oh, they share a look. That's what my notes said that I couldn't read. They look at each other, Ted nods. Uh, then he feels the grass. Feels different. I mean, the same but different. Metaphor? You know it, baby. And that's when Nate the Great comes out, uh, says, stop touching the grass. And Ted, he goes, Ted Lasso, Coach Beard. Oh, new manager. Sorry. Uh, take all the grass you want. Uh, I can go through the garbage and get you more. We just cut it. Uh, and... Uh, they have a little back and forth, but he goes, yeah, you really got to get off the grass, so no kidding. Uh, then uh, they go, okay, we're going to meet Rebecca Wel Welton. That's where I'm taking you. What's your name? Na who, me? No one asked my name. Ted says, oh, this is the first good pause. Uh, he pauses even longer when Nate doesn't answer. And he goes, I'm ready when you are. Oh, Nathan. Nathan, love that name. Love your hot dogs. Nate doesn't understand. Uh, he laughs anyway, and you see Ted's dimples actually when he kind of like when he's smi talking, smiling, hands in his pockets. Nate can't uh, say hello to Rebecca and Higgins, so he backs out, runs down the stairs. Uh, she's just slowly stocking her office now. So actually, I'll check the wall behind her now. No, so it is the same paintings as earlier. Miss Welton's my father. That's a great joke. Oh, she has a coat rack that looks like a tree. Look at that. Uh, this is Higgins, uh, uh, current director of communications. He says, oh, oh no, current. Uh, okay, get the IDs, any other information. Let's see what Ted says here. Wi-Fi password, wet wipes, and humidifier is what Ted needs. And they sit down. Something to drink. Ted wants coffee. She says, how's tea? How about, tea? how do you take your tea? We see that over his shoulder is the football stadium. So either they're filming this on location or they just did a great job. Uh, I don't know. It looks real to me. Went in Rome and Ted doesn't like uh, tea. It was the, uh, you know, you got to have preferences and be honest about them. So it's good that Ted's clear. A really clear about his feelings about T. He doesn't try to do stuff so people like him. And they say, okay, let's go around the club. She, the hall of the cl club's long, albeit modest history. 1897, first match. Uh, during the WWs, they, they did their parts. Some locals claim there's still Caspers running around here. 
And she said, oh, do you believe in those? He goes, well, uh, Casper's Ted goes, <laughs> you have to teach them to believe in themselves. Uh, and then uh, there's a bottle of champagne and uh, the owner, who's uh, Rebecca's ex, uh, who we'll meet later again, unfortunately, multiple times. Uh, that's when Ted says, how are you doing, honestly? Uh, and she says, well, it hasn't been easy. And then that's when they do the press surprise. Uh, and Ted goes, yeah, sure, after I get a couple of nights sleep. And she goes, no, no, right now which is not really fair, but then they say new manager of AFC Richmond, Ted Lasso, there's applause, there's Ted uh, looking a little uh, overwhelmed, you know, and uh, he comes to say, sits okay, uh, then the team's watching him, so we get a couple of glimpses of some of the teammates, uh, Sam Roy and Jamie mostly, and Roy's like, I want to listen to this, uh, Ted has bubbly water. People laugh at him. He didn't expect it to be fizzy. Pubs, we get the guys at the pub. And uh, they got a lot of questions. And Ted says, actually, okay, hold on, hold on. He's being assertive too, actually, at first. He sees beard, so he's uh, getting ready to win his $5. Uh, and he says, yeah, I really know nothing about football, soccer. So, uh he goes, but this is like every team. You got to figure out the team's going to give you the te- all they have. Uh, and then he starts making his mistakes. Uh, uh, but it kind of f- falls into his philosophy. We watch the beard reacting. We watch the team reacting. He's still trying to make the best of it. Uh, and he says, don't worry, my door's always open. You can ask me anything. No topic will be into touch. Uh, and it, this is where he calls on Trent Krim. I like your glasses. Thank you. I like his jacket too, by the way, Trent. Very, uh, actually, great layering. Holy moly, he's got three layers, at least. He's got a jacket, a collared shirt that's open, and a t shirt, and it fits his style. And uh, Trent says, What do you, what is this? Uh, is this a joke, this whole thing? Sam and Roy are not, uh, they go, do you even know any who any footballers are? And then it starts to go downhill from here. This is when Ted kind of, um, I don't know, you, you just kind of get, like, uh, all the pressure he's going to be under, right? Uh, like, he's a fish out of, this is a fish out of water scene, I guess, uh, where you see, yeah, not everybody's going to be uh, super uh, helpful to the fish out of water, maybe. Ted takes a drink, more water. Spits more water out. Uh, Rebecca says, okay, that's enough. Uh, Got to forgive everybody. You know, we usually have manners and hospitality. Aren't you a salty bunch? Uh, but the press room's full. Never was before. Uh, so maybe it's not a bad idea. And uh, so she says, you know, um, I've seen Richmond play a lot all these years under the previous owner. Profound mediocrity. She says, am I wrong? Uh, am I wrong? And I quiet somebody down. They say, no, you're not wrong. So maybe Coach Lasso doesn't have a CV, but he has one thing they don't, a trophy from this millennium. So we're changing things up, like it or not. Lasso, away. Higgins is inspired uh, for a moment. Uh, see you later, she says. Uh, Ted says, nice meeting y'all. Sorry I spit on you. Bye. And everybody's a little stunned. Uh, Ted's a little, uh, oh boy, sorry about that. She says, don't worry about it, Ted. Uh, you have to prove them wrong. Uh, they give him a regular water, which is fine. Still water. And Ted says, okay, I want to say hi to the team. Can't keep a gaffer from the pitch, eh? Can say that again. He doesn't know. Oh, for 2, he says. Uh, and this is when Higgins says, I love this guy, Ted Lasso. He's just what I need. And Rebecca says, yeah, right, uh, this is a this is set up for a setback. Uh, uh, my husband loved this club, and Ted Lass was going to help me, you know, uh, show him, show Rupert uh, that uh, who's boss. And like a gif or a gif, uh, and you're going to help me, Higgins. 
And she goes off. Higgins is having second thoughts and a tummy ache. Uh, Gaffer is going out to the pitch uh, to watch practice, but practice is called training. Going to be to vernacular they even use. Training makes perfect. There you go. They see Nate again. Nate brings him a sample of a uh, sports drink. The Roy Kent is in a bad mood. A classic old school midfielder legend. Won a Champions League with Chelsea eight years ago. And Ted says, this is a, I like this mix, young fella. Even Coach Beard likes it. I mean, Coach Beard doesn't say anything. He just nods and holds it up uh, with respect. Uh, praise does not come lightly. Nathan, you remembered my name. Uh, Jamie does that, uh, whatever that kick's called, a reverse flip kick. I don't know. Top scorer on the team. He's great at soccer, football. But uh, other than that, you know, they say, okay. And we see Sam. Uh, he's having a tough time. Uh, and then that's when the coach realizes that people are from around the world, including Wales. Uh, how many countries are in this country? Four, they both say it. Uh, then they follow Nate into the locker room. That's where we get kind of a nice, uh, you know, um, like not ominous, the opposite, inspirational moment. He loves the locker room, loves the smell, smells like potential and X body spray. Notes of an axe body spray. A Kraken, 28. Uh, Garen, something, 31. AFC Richmond is a goat. Uh, Rosenfeld, something number, I don't know. Bumberbotch, uh, just checking some of the names. Uh, uh, the team comes in. They look at Ted. You know, this is a testing moment. Roy really glares. Uh, slow walks him. Uh, they make joke about all jaws, all that jazz. Howdy fellas. Uh, my name's coach Lasso. This is beard, uh, firmus of victorious or something. They even have a saying. This is when we meet Keeley. Uh, still trying to check out some of the numbers. Uh, they're all out of focus right now. Team, all the other actors are having to act in the background while, you know, so that's tough for them. Jamie's got quite the garb on, shoulder, cross, shoulder, cross bag, cross body bag, uh, styling, uh, and, uh, not a polite person, doesn't treat Keely with respect. Uh, Keely doesn't seem to, um, she seems to, Bumberbatch 21, that was Bumberbatch for sure. Anywho, thanks for your time. Firmus Victoria. Then we do the office sequence, um, and you got the desk moving, posters getting put up, uh, book bags, card from Ted's kid, good luck, daddy, Ollie, uh, USA Hockey, Coach V, uh, Sugar Ray, and, uh, Wooden's Pyramid, I think, uh. And, uh, then he wakes, uh, Ted up, not Sugar Ray the band, Sugar Ray Leonard, I think is the, was the last, uh, poster. And they say, Hey Roy, that was fun. He says, well, great. I'm working for Ronald McDonald. Uh, terrific. That was like somebody said to me, like I said, uh, very similar reaction. They said, uh, something. And they said, this is when my career's come to interviewing a guy that puts people, they said it off the air, but, uh. They said, this is it, uh, interviewing a guy that puts people to sleep uh, on a podcast. And they said, yeah, this is uh, where it's come to. They said, uh, isn't it nice we're here together? Uh, Ted jumps down, fixes his hair, his believe uh, posters off. Uh, that's when he covers up Keeley. But um, no, that is only, I mean, I guess it was a choice of respect and not moralism. Uh, and to show kind of uh, actually maybe like foreshadowing of him and Keeley's relationship. Uh, but uh, I think this whole thing is about believing. We are Richmond hashtag uh, Grad Gardirius uh, something. Uh, but she says uh, she has a great joke. I believe it's crooked. Uh, and she says, I'm here to get grab Jamie's phone. He's getting waxed. Uh, 
and she grabs it. She sees Ted's respect, uh, so she's kind of uh, takes a pause, uh, and she helps him with the sign. How about that? Nice teamwork. High five. Power. Old school. I'm Keely. Oh, I'm Ted Lasso. Oh, you're trending hard on Twitter. Do you even tweet? No, but I do beatbox. Uh, and he beatboxes pretty decently. But she doesn't. She's like, I don't know how to react when a grown man beatboxes in front of me. And he told Bismarck. And she goes, uh, don't search on Twitter because... Uh, there's a lot about you. Uh, he says, I'll take my word for it. She says, welcome to England. The head's out. Uh, Ted goes into his office. Believe. We get a shot of believe. Then we get the car sequence, which is great. Uh, you know, we see kind of Nate's, you know, humble, humble car size versus Rebecca Higgins. So their cars even tell a story about the characters, which is nice. Uh, and uh, some physical comedy, Rebecca kind of saying, Higgins trying to be the conscience, and Rebecca saying, you don't have a conscience, dude. Your behavior in the past has shown uh, that uh, you're, you know, you're an enabler, uh, so you're going to be enabling my plans now, and I'll give you a promotion with a raise, so suck it up. Uh, and we see Ted doing the invisible steering wheel, beard holding the back. It was uh, steaming the window up even. And he, your God sent Ted and Lasso takes one and no one. He's still got his energy. And she says, okay. And Higgins, you going to work with me? And he goes, I accept. She's got an automatic door on her car. Uh, oh, she then now is when she reminds him that he's an enabler. Uh, of bad behavior. She drives off. Uh, Higgins groans, goes to his car, which is a powder or sky blue, uh, baby blue Volvo. Uh, beard drops uh, Ted off at his apartment. Uh, he gives him something. Oh, wet wipes, maybe. I don't. That must be what it is. Uh, one wet one. Couldn't quite see. Oh, let's see. Let's see everything that's in Ted's thing. Oh, boy, I got to rewind. Hold on. Ted o goes in his room. He's got a ba gift basket from I don't know whom. But it's a pretty nice one. There's bubbly water. There's a humidifier. Uh, Walker Highland Cow Shortbread. The Ultimate Cockneys Geezers is something. The Ultimate Guide. Marmite. DC tips, hobnobs. Those are I've I've, I've got hobnobs. Uh, the hobnobs are good. Uh, hulp. I don't know what those are. But that's what Ted ends up eating. I think those are like corn chips. Uh, a bobblehead of the queen. It looks like a pillow, and a couple other things you can't quite make out. Uh, and it sounds like Ted's eating those, uh, which sounds, seems like nuts or corn chip, corn, corn, whatever those things are called, corn nuts. Uh, checks his phone, tries to figure out the time, gets out, he packs his stuff away, or maybe takes out his PJs, takes a shower, and then calls home and uh, says, that's, oh, yeah, so we can see the humidifier and the wet wipes. Two packs, it looks like, or baby wipes. Uh, Ted's still wearing his wedding ring. Um, he says, "Jesus, kid, I just want." And he calls this kid first. Uh, just want to hear your voice. Thanks, big guy. Miss you. Then he talks to his mom. Love you too. I mean, he says that to his son. You get a beautiful shot of his apartment or the set that's his apartment, and a lot of windows in the living room. A lot of natural light. Uh, which is, you know, one of my big, big things of importance. Uh, and we kind of get some more emotional part. You say, okay, this person is uh, going through something, uh, but he's still trying to stay positive. Uh, but uh, in the face of uh, not everything going his way, Joe Arthur's his T-shirt, like I said earlier, trying to give you space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he says, uh, no, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Michelle, hey, hey, Michelle, I love you. 
And we see him pause again. No, that's okay. Really, yeah. Uh, and he says, okay. Uh, I'll, talk, uh, I'll talk to you. Uh, and hangs up, uh, looks around, takes a breath. And he's lying on his back in bed. Turns out his light. He's thinking clearly. Uncomfortable. So, shoot, now I can't sleep. Uh, and the episode ends. Uh, so, and that'll end this week's coverage of uh, Learning from Lasso. And we'll be back next week, I think, with episode two. And then we'll see what we do with all the stuff we could look up about the episodes because there's so much. Uh, um, Bismarck, just starting with Bismarck, he that closes the episode. Uh, so, uh, good night. You know, hopefully, Ted's resting and you're resting too. Good night. All right, I want to thank everybody that recently signed up for uh, our uh, to sign signed up to uh, support our uh, Midnight Mission uh, newsletter. Uh, help us build hygiene kits. Uh, take part in a community event. I want to thank Kir- Kristen, Kate, and Gail. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Donna, TS, and Cher. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Heidi, Crosby, and Shirley. Thanks, thanks, and good night. PAF, Karen and Rita. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Nancy, Amy, and Kathleen. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Julie, Rachel, and Chelsea. Thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Uh, Megan, Jamie, and MS. Thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Aisha, Susie, and Ricky. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Mary, Sarah, and Jan. Thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Carol, Philip, and Cole, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Susan, Lee, and Moxley, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Sean, Ada, and Catherine, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. John, Ada, and Emma, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Stephen, Kimmy, and Penny, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Hannah, Janine, Mike, and Stephanie, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Michelle. Rosie and Eve, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Thanks, everybody, signed up for the newsletter. Really appreciate it. If you're listening, it's a free way to help the show, free live show streams, free being, being a part of the community, being a part of positive change, extra access to me, and uh, you could do all that at uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnightmission, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnightmission. The show exists uh, because of people that support the show actively on Patreon or support our sponsors. So I want to thank everybody that does that on a regular basis. We grow by people spreading the word. Just spread the word about podcasts or the podcast. Uh, let people know about it. And uh, I think that's it. Uh, like uh, we have these Tuck You In sponsors. They've been able to get up to, I think, almost 500 episodes in the free feed. I think the last time I looked it was 476 or 479. But I appreciate it, and uh, so here's a talk you in sponsor, so we have more free episodes for you to listen to whenever you want. Thanks, and good night. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. Uh, as we talk you in tonight, uh, just remember, uh, shows here, if you ever want to, uh, don't, if you don't want to listen to these thank yous uh, that we just uh, f- finished, uh, or these tuck you in sponsors, you can always support the show directly on Patreon. You get uh, two ad-free episodes a week. You're also a part of the show. Uh, you're a part of what keeps it going and free for everybody else. So I really appreciate that help uh, and uh, couldn't do it without all of you. And, uh, yeah, thanks so much.